Welcome to the Tradies in Business podcast with your hosts, Warwick Bidwell and Nicole Cox. Divert your phone and grab a brew as Waz and Nick unpack tips, tales, secrets and stuff-ups from guests both inside and outside your trade, helping educate and inspire you to break the cycle of gut-busting and money stress and create a true trade business. G'day, listeners. Hello, listeners. Have you got your listeners on? We don't call them ears in my house. We call them listeners. Oh, you got your listeners on. Yep. Yes, I think some people's listeners have uh, gone missing. Oh, Whoa. straight into the big hole. There we go. <laughs> Must hey, be look, Friday. there's a rabbit. It ran down a hole. Let's go in after it, Coxie. <laughs> well, it kind of leads into what we're talking about prior to uh, starting hitting record, I suppose. Mm. That was me being a little ranty. What what a surprise. <laughs> so, language warning. I don't think it should be called a language warning. I think it's just a notification. Is this a is this an OHS uh, warning, Coxie? Do we have a swims for this? There are no swims for this. We just advise you <laughs> if you have ears and and they're adverse to swearing, you should cover them. Don't listen to this episode in front of your clients. The title generally gives it away, uh, which is why we were straight up about it, so that you can take ownership of the fact that you pressed play on a ranty pants fucking episode on a Friday. Taking ownership is what this is all about, isn't it? Oh, welcome. Welcome to the Tradies in Business podcast. (laughs) Uh, It has been... Look, I would say... I was going to say, Coxie, that we've dropped the ball a bit this week. No, we haven't. Um... But we haven't dropped the ball. We actually made a choice and took some ownership of not doing the podcast for a few days this week. That's right. We had some other stuff that we chose to be more important than the podcast. Sorry, (laughs) listeners. So there have been some other things that have taken priority. And uh, for those of you that listen regularly, you will know that the podcast is very important to Coxie and I. We're very passionate about this, and we have brought you a lot of content, which we love to do. So you would be correct in assuming that there's been some pretty serious stuff going down that we have pressed pause on the podcast when we said we were going to do it daily. So thanks for your patience. Um, great to have you back on a Friday. Um, Coxie, we really do like people who take ownership of their shit, don't we? We do worry. We, we set the example of taking ownership of our shit. We like everybody else to take ownership as well. We strive for it. We strive for it. I, I don't ever claim to be perfect and I don't want to come across as being self-righteous, but fuck me, there's some victims in this world. It's in there. I've never <laughs> seen more victims than I have in the last few weeks. It's, um, yeah, this one's going to get ranty. Listen. You have You have a great story that... I'm excited for you to share with our listeners, Coxie. <laughs> Take it away, Nicole Cox. All right. I was sharing prior to us coming live <laughs> that I'm a bit of a fan of an Asian soup. My goodness, are they good. Particularly love my fur. But I, I don't eat a lot of the stuff that goes into an Asian soup. Um, that's speaking very generally. But I, I don't do grains, full stop. End of story. So I have to strive pretty hard to find the right kind of places to order my Asian soup from where they're happy to substitute noodles for some vegetables or a bit of extra beef um, or chicken, depending on what I'm having. So I do my research pretty carefully. And I was recently researching a an Asian restaurant that has opened around the corner from my home. I was really pumped because I currently drive half an hour for my favorite soup at least once a week. And I was super pumped to think there's this place around the corner. Super that, pumped. Uh-huh. They, they have uh-huh, they have my favourite soup on on the menu. I was really excited and I thought, oh, I better just read through the uh, most recent posts is where I actually found it. And lo and behold, I found an argument with the client. Oh, oh, no. The customer had actually written a review to say, um, I'm struggling. Or they'd written a question, actually. I'm struggling to find... Uh, the allergen information regarding your um, particular meals uh, in your menu. And I rang just now, however, was ushered off the phone. The business owner or representative thereof 
blasted this woman for taking too much time on the phone in a busy period asking about their allergy information for each of their dishes. Can you, can you even? Strike one. Can you even? All right, so that's the point at which I decided I'm not eating at this restaurant because clearly my request for no noodles in my It's probably not going to be met well. Not going to work. I don't, <laughs> I don't think this will work for me. But then, so that was the end of it, essentially, for me, that that was enough for me, and this is probably the point I want you to understand as a business owner, that was enough for me to decide I won't be eating there again, and I have my Asian soup, my fur, at least once a week, at least once a week. Oh, it is fur soup. Yep, my favorite. So, I've walked away from this restaurant, but lo and behold, this week, they've turned up in my feed, um, because I obviously was was still following their Facebook page. And I'll, I'll, I did go and find the post. I'll read it to you. Did you unfollow them, Coxie? I have unfollowed them. Oh, that's like unfriending someone that expresses a belief or, you know, a dogma online where it's like, ooh, dude, I didn't know you believed that. Yeah, nah, sorry, not friends anymore. I have done that a couple of times this week as well. <laughs> I, I almost did it this morning. Somebody uh, posted something, I think mindlessly, sadly, did this parroting stuff without knowing, and it was around a particular issue that I'm not going to talk about on the podcast. <laughs> and I just went, oh, really? You're one of those people that say those things? Mm, I want to click unfriend, but I'll give you this chance. I always give, for, <laughs> for friends or people that I know, I give a couple of chances, but I, I this week I've gone on a bit of a rampage. Because I'm on social media so much, it, I'm finding it too draining. So off they oh, went this week. Sorry, goodbye. Quite fatiguing. It is fatiguing. I think so, the tolerance levels get low, but please. Oh, coffee. definitely. What, what is strike two for said uh, Asian soup business? I, I, I wish I could see all our listeners' faces when they hear me say this because I don't know whether it's <laughs> big enough that they'll get all cranky like me or, or it'll be a bit <laughs> too subtle. But th- there's this massive post in on, on a big colourful post so you can't miss it and it says... Sorry, everyone. We will be open Friday. Was given bad information regarding public holidays. Uh, well, it must be everybody else's fault then, Coxie. It must be everybody else's fault. I can't possibly put my hand up and say, sorry, everyone, I've mucked up the public holidays. We'll be open on Friday. Or not say anything at all. Looking forward to seeing you on Friday. Don't hey, we're open. Problem. If you're taking the day off, come down and enjoy some fur soup. Instead, we had to blame everybody or unknown person about the bad information they were given rather than actively look for the information yourself. Hello. I mean, fuck me. Is that hard to find out what day the public holiday is? <laughs> well, it can be. And it's no reason to go pointing the finger at everybody else. You know what? I wonder, Coxie, what might be going on for that person or what business. This fair statement. And I'm like, like well, it's tricky because... Um, I fear that people who get blamey and victimy are maybe going through some stuff. Maybe they're just miserable bastards, but uh, <laughs> maybe they're miserable bastards because they're going through stuff. And I, I just, I don't know, I kind of wish fruitlessly that people like that would, instead of arguing with customers and blaming someone for bad information about public holidays... If that is because they're having a shit week or month or year, if 2020 is, you know, smacking them around and uh, rogering them like the rest of us, um, maybe just say that. Yeah, there's nothing hey, wrong with that. I'm having a really fucked time at the moment. Um, screwed up this, fucked up that. Uh, I got shitty when you took heaps of time on the phone. Sorry about that. Yeah, how empowering is that? I know. And it's amazing when... We, in inverted commas, say, um, hey, having a really rough time at the moment doesn't condone or excuse my behaviour. Just thought you should know mm. that this has been going on and I'll, I'll do better next time. People around us in those times will generally go, holy shit, okay, I'm really sorry about that. Hey, can I help out with anything? And it's amazing how forgiving... Customers especially, I mean, this is a business podcast apparently. Um, it's amazing how forgiving and actually quite supportive your customers will be if you're just honest with them. Mm, 
And wow, I feel like hard. I'm talking to myself here, Nicole. Yeah, I'm going to suck you around the face in a minute. <laughs> it's, it's not hard to be um, honest and it's not hard to, you know what, I do this all the time. In fact, the greatest thing I ever learned was to take ownership with my parenting with my children because mm. it has taught them to be far better people and they are now, at, and I'm talking at 18 and 23 and 17, they're now able to actually actively come to me and say, you know what, I really shouldn't have spoken to you like that, mum, I'm sorry, or give me a hug or acknowledge it somehow, rather than, you know, that pressure when they were little and I was working 70 hours a week and I was doing all of the things, it would be my children that would suffer because I would be snapping at them or can't you just do this or can't you just fucking shut up or do as you're told. Um, it was always them that would, would cop the brunt of that and there was, I don't even remember how it came, but there came a point which I was taught, I wish I knew who taught me so that I could say thank you, that I needed to take ownership of that poor behaviour and actually say to the kids, even though they were little, hey, um, child number two, I'm really sorry for the way I just spoke to you. That was unacceptable. I shouldn't have exploded at you. Mum's facing a, a pretty tough time at the moment. I'm feeling a lot of pressure, but that's not your fault and I shouldn't have taken it out on you. I'm sorry. I'll try and do better next time. They are so much better for it now. And imagine if, you know, we talk often about bad reviews or bad comments or negative conversations around your social media. What if you actually just owned up to the mistake you made? Oh, look, I'm really sorry. I made a mistake. You're right. We should have done better. I hope I can make it up to you or I will do this to make it up to you or we will do better next time. Yes. It's not hard. Yes. It's... Uh... It's something that um, I think people get the wrong idea. Wrong is the wrong word, Warwick. Uh, I think uh, people misunderstand this whole ownership thing. It's not about being perfect and never making a mistake. It's about how we respond when we do. And I find people around me in life um, perhaps... Uh, overestimate my ability to do things well <laughs> and which is especially evident at the moment coxie um <laughs> in my life but uh you know i fuck up just as much as everybody else we all do it's even in my relationship you know and i'm on i'm on marriage number three there you go <laughs> listeners um put that in your pipe and smoke it but uh <laughs> You know, I still do dumb shit and say crap things to my beautiful wife. And the little game I play with myself is how quickly can I actually swallow the massive horse pill and say sorry? You mean the horse pill called pride? Yeah, pride and ego oh. and being right. Yes. And it, because it's it sucks to say, hey, I was wrong or... I overreacted or I said something shitty. Like, that feels really crap. That feels worse than, you know, festering on it for three days and not talking to each other. And and it's ridiculous. And it's become... Uh, I really love the reflex now of, damn it, I just snapped at my wife. I really want to let this turn into silence because I want I I like in some ridiculous way I want her to feel something because it's her fault and she did the thing or said the thing or forgot the thing and it's like well she should pay mm. for that like that's kind of the dumb internal dialogue it is it's almost like a punishment right it is it's so fucking stupid yeah and yet it is so natural for us as humans. We all do it. Absolutely. It's it's built into us. It's hardwired. It's self-preservation. It's self-protection. Mm -hmm. It's selfishness. We're, we're selfish creatures. We're all about survival. Humans have populated and fucked the planet because we're so good at surviving. And surviving means taking care of numero uno. Yes. And so I feel that now when I accidentally, you know, blurt some dumb shit out and... It's become a bit of a game with myself, though, of how many minutes is it going to take you this time, Was <laughs> Instead of days, it's now minutes, literally. And, you know, not bragging, but just as an example, listeners, 
I can generally swallow my own dumb pride or whatever else is going on in usually less than 15 minutes. Mm-hmm. About, about 10 minutes is all it takes for me to actually just, you know, to use the example with my wife, um, I'll go and seek her out and I'll take her by the hands, look into her eyes and say, honey, I love you and give her a hug, a meaningful, heartfelt hug. And holy shit, that makes a massive difference. And it just shifts the awful weirdness. Mm. And I've done that with clients. Now, I don't take them by the hand, look deep into their (laughs) eyes and tell them that I love them. (laughs) Everybody just got a little scared. I might have lots of clients, (laughs) Coxie. Or none. (laughs) It's like... That was, Coach? He's a weirdo. Yeah, this is not a service that I'm offering, okay? Can no. Can <laughs> hugs? Head over to Woz. Virtual hugs. Thank goodness for COVID. It's so, uh, but but actually, you know, having a connecting with your client saying, hey, I'm, I'm really sorry. I really appreciate your business and I fucked up. Um, here, let me give you a virtual customer hug. Here's, here's a free soup to say sorry, or uh, please, you know, come back and give us another go. We, we want to do better. Like, it's just that sincerity, Coxie, isn't it? Interestingly, I was um, on, and we've spoken about this before, don't ask the question unless you actually actively want to hear the answer, right? No. Um, Australia Post, I placed an order on the 22nd of last month for a, a particular outfit I wanted to wear for my first radio show. And I knew I'd be taking photos and I was really excited and it was our brand colours. I embraced the bloody orange. I've got an orange blouse. Anyway, fast forward to today, the 14th of August, and I still don't have my order. (gasps) So Australia Post had sent me a um, a survey on how I found their website when I was trying to find my order. Mm -hmm. It's been sitting in the one place since the 31st of July and it hasn't moved. It's, It's not gone anywhere. And so I told them exactly how I feel. And, of course, I've had absolutely no contact, nor has my parcel moved. But Mm. nobody cared about what I was feeling. Nobody cared that I made sure that I ordered it two weeks before I actually needed it, you know, to allow for the whole COVID thing and understanding that it might take a little bit longer. But that's – we're coming up now. We're a week short of it being a whole month for an order in Australia. And it's quite simply because it's gone missing. Now, I'm lucky that I've contacted the company who I ordered from and they've immediately launched an investigation with um, Australia Post to try and find it. But I think it's gone. I think it's gone to, I don't know, parcel heaven. China. Why ask me the question if you don't actually care about the answer? (laughs) That's right. It's a waste of time. We we do talk about it a lot on the podcast, Coxie, and I don't think we can talk about this too much. You know, there's a few issues or, or a few aspects of of business and life that um, ought to be unpacked regularly and delved into and understood. And, you know, I think it's folly to think that we could talk about ownership on one episode of a podcast or listeners that you've read one book about being responsible and it's like, yep, box tick, done that. Um, Don't need to learn any more about that. Like so many things, like meditation, like um, physical health, like spiritual uh, connection, it's a it's a practice, mm. and being uh, a responsible, above the line, as we say, person who takes ownership and responsibility, it's a practice. It's a daily thing. It needs to be dug into all the time. So, you know, don't. Argue with your customers about stuff. That's that's not going to help you. It's going to piss them off. It's going to hurt you and your business. And then that'll just give you more ammunition to believe that the world is out to get you and that customers are all assholes. And in reality, it was your fucking fault in the first place. Absolutely, it was. And if you can get it under 10 minutes, you can save a lot of grief. You can and you can potentially. Like, I can't explain to you... I learned this lesson in business from uh, one of the pharmacy managers I had many, many years ago before I started taking over pharmacy myself. 
And he would regularly fuck up. I'll call it for what it was. He had too much on his mind. He was a classic case of the business being in his head and not systemized. And so he'd be constantly saying, yes, I will order that product or XYZ tablets ready for the client for the next day. And he'd forget. And he would just literally come down from his ivory tower because he's a pharmacist. So he actually had an office that was up higher than everyone else. And he would do actually, uh, apart from the hugging bit, he would get into their faces nicely look into their eyes and explain you know what I stuffed up I didn't order that I should have ordered it and I didn't but you know what I'm going to do now I'm actually going to send one of the girls to our sister pharmacy and they're going to pick it up for you and we'll deliver it to your home and I'll solve this problem for you before the end of the day you know what every single one of those customers was always okay there was never the frustration there wasn't the upset it was you've admitted to me you were the problem and you're solving it for me as quickly as you possibly can there is nothing better than that you, you, that's all you, you're required to do. You can't always fix the mistake, but you can solve the problem and you can't admit that it was your fault in the first place. And, and you don't even need to, it's acknowledging, isn't it? It's acknowledging their feelings. It doesn't even need to be fault. There are times when customers come and they're pissed off and it's actually, you've not actually done anything wrong. And I'll get into that a bit deeper on another episode because there's always something you could have done better. But it may be a miscommunication. Let's just call it for what we would normally say is actually the customer's wrong. This is a miscommunication. You haven't set their expectations. All you actually need to do in that case is acknowledge their letdown, acknowledge their feeling, acknowledge their disappointment, and you can turn that customer around in a heartbeat. Yeah. I I recall saying this on a previous episode maybe a hundred times or more is – People want to be heard. That's all they want. And I know that my wife wants to feel heard, Mm. as do I. Mm. And business is all about relationships. Mm. And if you suck at relationships, you're going to suck at business. So if you want to get better at business, get better at relationships. Get better at the human stuff. Yeah. Go read some books about psychology, about, about... I don't know, compassion, like go read stories, biographies, listen to audio books, maybe even listen to this podcast some more. Uh, but, you know, I, I reckon, Coxie, we could predict how good someone's going to or, or what sort of results they're going to get in bu- business, not good or bad. I reckon we could predict the results for some people in business based on the relationships they, that they have with the people close to them. Most definitely. And if there's dysfunction in the the sort of you know inner and middle circle around that person i'd be willing to bet a fair bit of my cash that there's going to be some problems in their business mm. because it's it's a people game you know this is what's wrong with the world at the moment is people are fucking hopeless at relationships and there is a massive lack of compassion and understanding and hearing others in the world because everyone's so busy trying to get their own fucking message out there that they're not actually taking the time to hear anybody else. I saw a really interesting video um, this week, actually. Hello, Rachel, if you're listening, thank you for everything that you're doing to help us. Rachel sent me a fantastic video uh, this week, and it was from a lady who's working with tradies with their social media, essentially. And she's been observing a couple of big tradies doing big things in Victoria, uh, berating the government and having some really strong political opinions. Now, I am not at all adverse from a political conversation. I don't mind them. And I actually can happily have a conversation with somebody who I disagree with. But you know, the place for that is not on social media. And those people are doing more damage to their businesses than they are, than COVID and this shutdown is doing because of their need to have their opinions in a space where everybody has to be faced with it. But how many people are turning away because they don't agree? Or how many people are uh, offended? I know we don't like being offended, but the truth is they get offended and they walk away. Or it's no different than my story with my noodle lady. I actually won't use that business anymore because I don't like the way she dealt with things. And that could have been done professionally. Mm. And would have been fixed, just like my political opinions don't actually ever make it onto my Facebook page as strongly as I might feel because I know not everybody agrees with them and I don't feel the need to make everybody agree with me or even listen to my opinion. 
Mm. It's <laughs> it's um it's probably another rabbit hole we could happily dive down about uh, you know the use of social media and and seeking validation of our opinions and stuff online in a public forum. It's like what's missing for that person in their own life that they actually need to somehow garner the support of a bunch of other people online, mm. but at what cost? Yeah. You know, I'm all for, as you, I'm all for some good, robust conversation around issues and, you know, I've I've been a part of some posts on other people's feeds and pages about COVID and the issues with the economic stimulus packages and all that sort of stuff, but it's a – it's a more um, adult-based debate and conversation around the topic than it is about a personal attack on others. And there's a big difference between the two. So, And I think, you know, to, to come back to our conversation there about ownership, Coxie, I think that's part of the problem is we... I, I think sometimes we're unwilling to take ownership because we're actually at attacking our own self personally. Yes. Because we're so used to attacking others personally. Yes. And, uh, you know, it's not about a value judgment on if I'm the noodle lady just because I say sorry and, you know, can I do better next time and somehow make that right for you? The answer might actually be no, I'm never coming back here again. It's like, okay, look, I understand. That's your choice. Mm -hmm. I just want you to know that I'm sorry and I do appreciate your business even though you're never coming back. Somehow, I think a lot of us invalidate ourselves so badly if we do that, that that's why we avoid it because, you know, we actually tear ourselves down when we say sorry instead of actually just saying sorry or, you know, you don't have to use the word sorry, but it's like, hey, look, we stuffed that up. Um, we really appreciate your business. Just want you to know that I know I can't fix the situation because it's already happened. Um, I just want you to know that I, I appreciate that that would have caused you, you know, frustration or anger or loss or whatever it might be. Full stop. And the most important point there is actually the full stop. And how I wonder what our taste or our conversations would be around Telstra uh, if <laughs> they actually took ownership. Like to call it out for we speak so often. <laughs> I know that I've picked up the phone on some occasions. I'm ready to rip somebody a new one because Telstra's managed to piss me off because they've let me down yet again and I needed something from them. And I get on the phone to the beautiful person on the end of the phone and they always say to me, I'm so sorry to hear you're frustrated or I can understand how you feel. And that's an equaliser for me. It's like, damn it, now I can't yell at anyone anymore. <laughs> You've taken away my, my ranty anger. You've ruined it for me. I can't take it out on you because you didn't actually do anything to me. No, I feel soft and cuddly now and <laughs> you for ruining my anger. Uh, so, um, I don't know, Coxie, I feel like we, we might have even caught a rabbit this morning. I think we're... Uh, down yeah. the rabbit hole. I don't like rabbit. Did you eat rabbit as a kid? Rabbit stew? I have had rabbit, yes. <sighs> okay, you eat It's not bad. Rabbit. It's not okay. bad, but I wouldn't... I wouldn't go out of my way to eat it. It's it's a like they're scrawny bloody things. <laughs> <laughs> they are scrawny things. I'd and much different. prefer a grass fed steak. But anyway. Thank you. Um each to their own. Or some noodle free soup. <laughs> <laughs> if you can find someone who'll actually change it for you. I can. I've just got to drive half an hour, which is fine. There you go. Well that's your choice, so you should take ownership of that, Coxie. I'm very comfortable with that. I enjoy my experience very much. <laughs> Listeners, if you would like to join the conversation and share your thoughts on noodles or public holidays or arguing with customers, um, we'd love you to be part of the conversation. You can do that via our Facebook page, um, our Facebook group, all called Tradies in Business. Um, you can find us on the website. Drop us a message. Uh, jump in and be a part of the conversation. We always love hearing from you. And uh, we always like to hear your feedback about these episodes. So um, we've had a bit of fun doing a Fuck It Friday today. I feel uh, like we haven't done one for a while. We did do last one last week, though, didn't we? Yeah, it's been a long time. Well, it feels like a long time between mm -hmm. drinks, but there has been a few things going on. So there has like been a lot of time compressed into a, a short space. That is true. And we will be back with daily episodes when we can. We're not going to promise anything. We'll do it when we can. There's a bit of stuff and it'll wait. And we'll see when we can. But you know where to find us and we are there every day.
Thanks for listening as always and uh, enjoy the rest of your Friday afternoon. Thanks for listening. All right. You've been listening to the Tradies and Business Podcast with Warwick Bidwell and Nicole Cox. Find out more about today's guest, tools for your trade business and other cool stuff at tradiesandbusiness.com.au.